What's up guys, in this video we're going to be setting up the backend server. Now for this we're going to be using Feathers.js and a cool tool that they have to help you quickly start up a project is the Feathers CLI. So if you don't have that already downloaded, go to terminal and type in this command npm install um, and then get yourself Feathers CLI. So I'm going to hop over here to my terminal. I already have that installed so I'm not going to. Um, I'm just going to cd into a folder called server. This is an empty folder, and I'm going to start building the Feathers.js server in here. So once you have that installed, it gives you a command called Feathers, and then you can do generate app. This will basically bootstrap the whole app and create a lot of code for you. So the project name, um, I'm going to call it Silent Auction. Um, no description. Um, the folder is going to live in source. I'm going to be using yarn. And then you can see it's downloading everything you need for the project and it created a bunch of files for you. Now, also, if you have done feathers before, make sure you do update your feathers CLI too before following this. If your CLI looks different, because they just did big update, and so this is using the newest version. Okay, so now if I just do an ls, I can see all these folders were created for me. Now, just real quick, um, actually, no, we, we'll, we'll do that in a second. Um, the next thing we want to set up is authentication. So Feathers Generate Authentication will help you get that set up. And we're going to be using a username and password. So you can just push Enter or Spacebar to select which one you want. Um, we're going to keep the default as users. And then here... I'm going to be using Postgres as the database for this. If you don't have Postgres installed, you could use NDB or InMemory. That might be a little easier to set up. Um, but if you do have Postgres or you want to learn how to use Postgres, do install that. Um, and then you select SQLize and then Postgres. And then right here, uh, this is the database connection string. Basically, this just has your database name. Um, you don't have to worry about changing it there. Usually what I like to do is just keep it um, like that. And then you can always change it later. Um, like for example, I, I like how my project is named right now. And I want to call my database silent underscore auction. But let's say my project name, uh, I want it to be a little different. So let's say I go into uh, config and then default. This is where you're configuration for your um, back end is. And if you go to Postgres here, you can change this URL. So let's say I don't want to put my database to call it silent auction. I want to call my database, um, I don't know, Bob or whatever you want to call it. You can change that there. I'm going to leave mine as silent auction for now, but if you need to change that, that's where you would change that. Now we can go ahead and do npm start, and we should see an error uh, because we don't have a database setup. I don't have a silent auction in Postgres. So we're going to have to create this database. Um, if you have a tool, a GUI to create um, Postgres databases, that you can use that. Or I use something called psql. If you just type psql, it'll open up prompt, and then we can say create database and then silent auction. And then backslash q gets you out of that. And then we have a database called Silent Auction. Now when I do npm start, we should see Feathers.js starts up and it's at localhost 3030. So if I come over to my browser and I just refresh localhost 3030, you can see this little splash screen that they have and you know you set up this correctly. So we set up authentication already. Um, and I come back over here real quick. Um, we also want to have, so our authentication is with this users thing. Um, and now we also want to create auctions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say feathers generate service. Now basically services, you can think of them as tables in your database and they allow you to basically access um, things um, in your database. And it's kind of a way for you to get this uh, connected. So we're creating a service I called, I'm going to be using SQLize, I'm going to be using SQLize for all the services. I'm calling it auctions and keeping the default here is good. 
and we want authentication with it, and this is going to be in Postgres. Okay, so this feathers service um, is what's going to allow us to basically make requests to slash auctions um, and then create auctions. This will make more sense later. Okay, so now I'm just going to set up the schema. So I'm going to open up the project. I'm going to go into source and then models. So the first model we're going to work on is the auctions model. So now I have a name. If I come back over here, I want to name, current price, expiration date, and a seller. So I'm going to string decimal date time. So I can copy this. I can say current price and this is going to be a decimal value and I'm going to go out to two decimal places Oops. and then I'm going to create one more um, expiration date this is going to be of the date type and then notice for this last one the seller this is going to be um, a foreign key to users and we're actually going to be setting up a one to end relationship. If we come over here to the SQLize um, documentation, well how they recommend setting up one to end relationships is to use this has many function right here. So we're going to say, in our case, we're going to say user has many and then auctions. So, and we also need to create a username field for our user. So now we want to do that. Down here is where you create associations, but we're actually going to do this in the users model. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy email and we're going to call username. And again, we need to make sure this is unique. So we'll keep that unique field because we don't want two users with the same username. So then we're going to say users.hasMany and then we can get the uh, auctions model from this models object that it passes. So we can say models.auctions. And then you can uh, set up a foreign key. And this is just naming it. So I'm going to call it seller ID. And let's underscore it. And that will set up the relationship between users and auctions. Um, so this is, we have our schema set up. We now have users and auctions looking good. Um, there's one thing that I want to add though, and that is a hook. Now hooks in Feathers.js can happen before or after. Um, I'll show you. So if you go to auctions, hooks, um, these are functions that are run after uh, a request is made or before a request is made. Um, in our case, we're going to want to do something before a request is made. Um, and that's when we create um, an auction. What we want to do is we want to get the seller ID, right? But well, to get the seller ID, you don't want to post that. You want to authenticate with uh, a token, and then you want it to be automatically added. So Feathers.js has a hook that you can use. Um, Feathers authentication hooks. So I'm just going to copy this and we're going to install that. Um, so it's called um, associate current user. Here it is. So what this is a hook that we can add to the create um, uh, method. So every time we create an auction, what it's going to do is it's going to add the current user. Um, to the uh, auction object. And this will make more sense in a second. But just follow along for now. So I'm just gonna open up a new tab in my terminal. And I'm in the same folder, as you can see. I got all my server stuff here. And I'm just gonna do yarn, add, and then this. If you don't have yarn, you can use npm too. Um, and do npm install. Okay, now I have that. And I can just come back over here and I can copy their example. Okay, I'm going to call this auth instead. And I'm going to say auth. And we're going to bring that down here. And we're going to add it right here. Oops. And we can get rid of this stuff. This is, we don't need that. 
Okay, so every time we create an auction, what we're gonna do is we're going to add the seller ID um, of the current user. So there we're gonna, a user has to authenticate, um, and then when they're authenticated, they can then create auctions. When they create an auction, we know their user, um, so we grab their ID from their user and we put it in uh, the seller ID attribute for auctions. And notice how seller ID here matches up with our model um, over here, the foreign key we created. Um, I'm now going to do like a little example um, of how this is working. So we just set up a lot of stuff. So I'm going to go to the root of this directory and just do npm start. And then we're going to come over here to uh, Postman, and I'm just going to show you what we just created. Um, so just with those few lines of code and running all that stuff and creating the models, we now have most of our backend done. So I can create a user by uh, posting to slash users. So this is our base URL and then slash users and make a post request. And then I'm going to pass in this JSON here. Um, the username is Bob, uh, email is bob at bob.com, and the password will say is Bob. So if I send this request, um, up, and the username of relation users does not exist. Okay, so this is a good example of an error you might happen when you are um, programming in Feathers.js. So you notice how um, it says a column doesn't exist, but we just added that column, right? over here in our uh, model, right here. And if you start the server before um, adding columns, like I did to show you at the beginning, it then creates the schema, and then adding onto the schema, uh, you have to basically do a migration or drop the database. So if you go back to psql, you can drop database silent auction, and then we can recreate it. So basically you just need to refresh um, the database. And now if I do npm start again, and then I come back over here, I can now create my user. Okay, so we created a user called bob at bob.com. Now what we'd like to do is to log in and to get a token. So now we can post, make a post request to slash authentication. Now when we pass in a username, or in this case an email and a password, we need to make sure we put strategy local. Um, this is known as a, a local strategy when you pass in an email and a password. So this is the same uh, credentials we created with our user. So we can send that in and we then get an access token. Now anytime we want to do something with the auctions, we need to pass in this access token. Because this is basically connected to our user um, and it says we are logged in and we are an authenticated user. We're not, we're, we're legitimate and the server knows about us. So we can come back over here. So now we're going to make a post request to auctions and create an auction. So here is an access token. We're going to paste in the one we just got over there. Um, and then we're going to create a new auction for a blueberry. So the current price is 1377 and here's the expiration date. Um, and then I pass in this access token. Now notice how I'm not passing in a seller ID. Because we added that hook, what's going to happen is it's going to read this access token, it's going to authenticate us, and it's going to understand which user we are, and it's going to automatically add the seller ID. So if I send that, notice how we get a seller ID of 1. If we come back over here, this was the same ID as the thing as Bob. And that's how we know that these guys exist. And I can also um, come over here. So we created a, uh, one auction. I can find all the auctions. Right now we only have one, but as we get more, um, we can make a get request to slash auctions. And now we again have to pass in authorization uh, to show that we're logged in. So we have to add a header called authorization and we pass our token over here. So I'm gonna paste my token in for uh, the, what we got when we logged in. I'm going to say send and we get this guy that we just created. And if I come back over here, 
create two more. If I come here, get it, you can see they populate here. So this is, we just created this API basically that we can now use um, with Feathers.js. Now there's one more thing we want to do, and that's notice how when we display an auction, what we'd really like to show is the seller's name. Um, so we want to basically get the user and say, instead of seller underscore ID here, um, you know, Bob. Bob created these three auctions, and we want to show who created the auctions, for example. Um, so in the next video, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be setting up, we'll be finishing up the server and adding the seller uh, name right here. All right, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.